All right, so I'm out for the first time today testing out my Autopilot 120 from Old Town. And one of the most important decisions you can make um, after you buy uh, an electric powered kayak is what battery you're going to use. And uh, I fretted over this decision a lot. I did a lot of research on it. Uh, the first decision you need to make is sealed lead acid versus lithium. This is a topic that's been covered greatly in numerous discussions about uh, selecting batteries for your kayak. Uh, namely, there's a lot of advantages to lithium batteries. One of them primarily being is their increased performance um, over a single charge. So I think a lot of you have probably seen these charts before where you've got the lithium battery there. Over time, uh, it doesn't really lose as much voltage um, as the battery depletes its charge, whereas uh, sealed lead acid, you'll see that slow and steady decline in voltage output. At some point, it's going to fall below the minimum voltage to maintain propulsion in your motor, and your motor's slowly gonna decline in, in function and output of thrust, and you're just not gonna be able to go. Whereas a lithium battery is gonna be able to maintain that high level of voltage way down into the, the lower end of the battery's charge. So, you know, for 12 volt systems, a uh, sealed lead acid battery may stop functioning uh, for you essentially at 30% of charge, whereas with the lithium battery, you may get all the way down to below 10% before the battery cuts out on you. So you might be wondering why is there even a debate between sealed lead acid and lithium batteries? And the reason is, is because the upfront uh, initial cost is actually quite a bit different between the two different uh, batteries. So Old Town recommends Group 27 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on in this video. I know guys are running 60 amp hour batteries when they don't have high power demands. But uh, I just took some averages of uh, sealed lead acid versus lithium, and you're going to pay about $207 plus or minus some change for a sealed lead acid battery of that amperage versus about 835 bucks for uh, a lithium ion. So you're looking at uh, over four times as much cost uh, for a lithium battery up front. So what I did was to uh, take five 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries available on Amazon um, and compared them to the five lithium iron phosphate batteries I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, so to kind of give you a fair comparison of the two, obviously uh, it's a much bigger investment to buy a lithium battery up front. Uh, but as you can see here in this chart, uh, the number of cycles you're going to get out of a lithium battery are going to be substantially more than what you would get out of a sealed lead acid battery. Uh, anywhere from 10 times as much to maybe six times as much. If you look at the average cost per cycle, you're looking at the bottom end for sealed lead acids. Let's say a sealed lead acid lasted 500 cycles. You're gonna be paying about 42 cents per cycle, um, all the way up to 69 cents per cycle if it comes out of that bottom end of 300 cycles. With lithium iron uh, ion batteries, you're gonna be looking at 27 cents to 42 cents per cycle. So it's substantially cheaper. You get a much longer lifespan, five to seven years versus three to five out of sealed lead acid. And, over, and for me, one of the biggest things is that the average weight of a lithium battery was uh, more than half that of a sealed lead acid battery. And that was a main goal for me when searching for a battery for my Autopilot 120. So ultimately, I decided to go with lithium batteries for powering my Autopilot 120. The reason I did that is because of the increased performance of these batteries uh, when you're out on the water on a full charge the lighter weight they're over half the weight of a normal sealed lead acid battery and just the increased longevity okay so i'm going to go through the five uh group 27 lithium 100 amp hour batteries that i considered for this and actually one of these is an outlier and i'll go over that more uh, so these are just in alphabetical order the ones i considered first was amped outdoors which has a good reputation in the industry uh, a lot of positive reviews. Uh, they cost about $700 for the battery, which comes out to about seven bucks per amp hour. Um, I have a customer service rating of five here, and I'm gonna go into that in a bit more detail in just a sec. They come with a three year warranty, and they have a weight of 26 pounds. 
So one of the things I found is that a lot of these companies um, all offer warranties, um, but to me, the, the best way to measure warranty is to look at what their level of customer service is and reputation. And so what I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to find a way to more easily measure this. So I sent all of these companies a short message on their contact business page uh, asking uh, what their advice was. Basically, I said, I recently purchased an electric-powered autopilot kayak from Old Town Canoe and Kayak. I'm shopping for a battery. Due to their performance and longevity, I'm seriously considering investing in lithium. Um, there are many companies out there producing these batteries at various points. What sets your battery apart from your competitors? And then I ranked their responses from one to five, one being worst, five being best, based on how quickly they got back to me or if they even got back to me at all, and just how informative and convincing their response was. All right, so Amped Outdoors got back to me really quickly within an hour, um, talking about how they'd worked hand in hand with Old Town. They gave me a couple different recommendations on battery amperages based on my usage. Uh, they talked about their three-year guarantee, um, their world-class customer service, fast ship times, and the, they're able to justify their lower price points uh, because they say they work directly with consumers rather than going through uh, retailers. Um, and they were always quick to respond to every single follow-up question I had. I was very impressed with the quality of customer service. Next up was uh, Battleborn batteries. Uh, these have a good reputation in the solar industry. They had a very high cost of $950, that's $9.50 per amp hour. I gave them a mid, uh, a mid classification for customer service and I'll show you why. They do have a very good warranty at 10 years and their battery is just a touch heavier uh, at 31 pounds. Now I should say all of these batteries do have the BMS battery management uh, systems that help to maintain the health of the battery during charge and alleviate uh, the battery from getting too hot or overcharged and causing fires and things like that. So Battleborn got back to me very quickly within three hours and they had a very detailed email about um, how they manufacture their batteries here in the United States rather than import them and slap their labels on them. Um, I'm not sure I entirely believe that because I'm not aware of anybody producing these cylindrical lithium cells in the United States. I think they're importing the components and assembling them here. So that's a little bit of a, of a stretch. Otherwise, they emphasize their really good warranty, uh, great customer service. So they were always really quick to uh, reply to all of my emails within 24 hours. So overall, I mean, very good customer service. So next up was Dakota Lithium, which has a strong reputation in the industry. They're deeply involved in a lot of the bass fishing tournaments. Um, and I've used these actually for my ice fishing equipment. They have a cost of about $900, so a little bit cheaper than Battleborn at $899 per amp hour. Uh, they have a very long warranty, the industry-leading warranty of 11 years, and they weigh about 32 pounds. The issue with Dakota Lithium um, is that they never replied uh, to any inquiries I've sent to them. And that's actually been true for me with them for the past year. I've been trying to get a hold of them on various topics and questions. Um, and they've never gotten back to me. Uh, so I had to give them uh, the lowest score possible on customer service. Okay, so next up is Omu batteries at $949. There's a little bit of an asterisk here because this is actually an outlier. It's a Group 31 battery that is 150 amp hour lithium. Yes, that is a lot of juice. Uh, so the reason I included this is because another YouTuber posted a video showing them actually fitting this battery in the Old Town battery boxes. Uh, so when you look at the amp hour cost here, it's $6.32, which is the cheapest one. Uh, they had very good customer service, as I will show you. Um, we went back and forth several times. Uh, they have a four-year warranty, and the weight is a little bit higher, which makes sense. It's a little bit bigger battery at 35 pounds. So Omu responded very quickly within an hour, and basically it was very short, basically said that they don't make a 100 amp hour. There goes ours is 150 amp hours, and they have the best in terms of support and reliability. I followed up with the question is, how is it they're able to fit so many more cells, e.g. more uh, amp hours, into a smaller area than their competitors? Uh, and how many cycles can I expect from their batteries, and do they carry any kind of guarantee or warranty? 
He said that they don't actually put more cells in per se, they use a better cell form, a basically a different cell shape, which I'm gonna go into more here, called a prismatic cell, which allows them to maximize the space inside of the battery. Whereas versus everybody else is using the cylindrical cells. Um, and then he went more into cycle life, um, saying that 2000 is probably reasonable, uh, but you'll get 4,000 or 4,000 to 5,000 at more reasonable cycle depth. So it really depends on how you use the battery in terms of longevity. So let's dive into this whole cylindrical versus prismatic quickly. Um, so the cylindrical cells are the ones that everybody else is using uh, in this video, at least all the batteries featured in this video, and probably the one that you're most familiar with. Uh, these are basically these cylinders. They stack them into these batteries and wire them together. They are cheaper to produce. Uh, because of their increased surface area, they dissipate heat better, and heat is a major enemy of batteries. If one cell fails, uh, it doesn't have major consequences for the battery. Whereas prismatic cells uh, are basically made up of these thin wafers. You can see down in the lower right-hand corner there. They stick these together into cells, these square cells, um, and then wire them all together, and then they pack all those square cells into the battery. They're very space efficient, especially when you're using a square battery. They're more expensive to produce because there's a lot more involved in connecting all of those little thin sheets of uh, lithium. They can overheat more readily because of the reduced surface area. There's a lot more uh, wiring involved. And the battery management systems can struggle more when managing the battery's health, especially during charging or when it gets too hot. If one pouch fails, the whole battery can fail. So they're very vulnerable to this. And I followed up with a question to Omu about what do they do to help prevent uh, or help the BMS manage the, the battery health. He actually never replied to that question. Um, if he would have, if he would have reassured me that the battery management systems can handle this, I probably would have bought this battery. So that one failure to communicate um, really cost him a sale. Uh, they Having a 150 amp hour battery would have been huge. That's a lot of extra juice for not much extra weight. And the last battery I considered was the Mighty Max uh, 100 amp hour lithium battery. This is the cheapest 100 amp hour lithium battery on Amazon. Uh, so 675 bucks, pretty cheap. Um, only the Omu beats it out in terms of cost per amp hour. Uh, as expected, with uh, it's probably just a Chinese company that sells direct. Uh, I got no reply on the customer service. They have a one-year warranty, so the worst out of everybody listed here. Uh, and they have a weight of about 30 pounds. Okay, so being the math nerd that I am, I took all of these and I ranked them compared to each other. Uh, from one to five, one being the best, uh, five being the worst. If there was a tie, I split the number. And what you see clearly is that Amped Outdoors really stands out uh, on its own and separates itself from the pack. And so ultimately, that is the battery that I purchased. Okay, so this kayak can run off of a sealed lead acid uh, battery or a lithium battery. So if you want to test the health of your battery, if you're running lead acid, you can simply look up here, hit the test button, and this will give you your charge. If you're running lithium, that is not accurate. That is only for sealed lead acid batteries. Okay, if you're running lithium batteries like I am today, uh, I actually attached an aftermarket Bluetooth lithium battery monitor, and then it comes with a battery tracking app. I can then look at my uh, battery voltage usage uh, and I can also look at uh, just what percentage of my battery I've used. So I've been out here trolling for about an hour and I've used uh, just about 4% of my battery. So at that rate uh, we're looking at a lot of time on the water. Okay so let me just briefly show you that uh, Bluetooth device that I'm using to track my battery. Here's the battery tracker. You just download uh, an app that lets you see it and then just connect it into the battery. It's very easy to use. I would say that the interpretation of the actual charge should be taken with a grain of salt. 
But what it does uh, do very well is it shows you your voltage output. And so if you monitor, you can actually set it to give you a warning as your voltage output starts to decline. That kind of gives you an idea that you need to get your butt back to the ramp. Okay, so I'm going to finish up here with just three tips to increase the longevity of your lithium battery if you decide to invest in one. One is don't store it in your hot car. So between trips, pull it inside and let it cool off. Um, don't let it get super hot inside of your car. It's going to damage the battery. Heat's not good for it. Um, secondly, uh, after every trip, make sure you top off your battery, especially if you're using your battery frequently. Uh, that's going to increase the longevity of the battery. Unless you plan on not using it for several weeks or months, then you want to actually drain it down below 70%. Uh, and store it at that level. So between 50 and 70 percent they say is best when you're going to store it. Uh, other than that, that's all I have. If you have any questions about uh, lithium batteries or sealed lead acid batteries, let me know and I'll try and help you out. I'll put links to all of the products mentioned in this video, all the batteries, everything else, the Bluetooth monitor. Um, additionally, I'll also include some uh, research links on sealed lead acid versus lithium if you need a little bit more detail there. All right, guys, I'll see you next time out on the water. Hopefully this helped. Good fishing. Bye.